So, in Sri Lanka, Britain, protesters have been jailed for defying court injunctions, sentences of up to six months imposed by law luminaries such as Dame Victoria Sharp at the so-called Royal Courts of Justice. It was a case of upper middle ruling class doling out disproportionate sentences to the lower middle class. Lucky they weren't plebs, otherwise the terms handed down would have been even more draconian. Even so, when you take into consideration the crimes of the rich and powerful, which are rewarded rather than penalised, with Insulate Britain imprisonments, we have a textbook illustration of our feudal capitalist system of law and order. But if the powers that be think they've heard the last of Insulate Britain, they will be sadly mistaken. Others will replace them. Already one jailed protester, Emma Smart, is preparing to go on hunger strike. And we all know the repercussions of such actions. The situation could spiral out of control and lead to street confrontations rather than passive sit-downs if other elements become involved. Outside the case of Insulate Britain, the government, with its forthcoming police bill, will give the authorities power to make gatherings, demonstrations, protests illegal, almost at a whim. Again, as with everything else, if enough people defy the power en masse with determination, what can the authorities do apart from exacerbate the situation? Small, isolated protests such as Insulate Britain are easy enough to contain and repress. Tens of thousands of angry, determined people out on the streets are enough to nullify any ruling class, law, or order, and justice at least on a temporary basis. We have to make such a situation more permanent. Bye.